program in a little bit. Uh, just had a couple days to, to prepare for this and see how it goes. I'm looking forward to sharing with you some ideas and some thoughts. And have some fun along the way. I don't know if you know my background or not. I spent 30 years in the business world with Alan Bradley and RCA uh, prior to coming to Purdue. Retired from Purdue after 22 years uh, with them. Retired as a full professor in the College of Technology that I've been blessed with. Retired military, so you see us saluting ourselves all the time. He's my commander, so uh, it's, it's a pleasure to work uh, with and for Jarris. Thank you for the playing we do. We're going to talk about this thing called leadership. We have a passion for leadership. And in fact, there's an author named John Cotter. He wrote the book, What Leaders Really Do. And he said that, in fact, as a nation, as, as a world, we are overmanaged and underled. Would you agree with that? Yeah. yeah Look at yeah. government. Yeah. We're overmanaged and underled. Look at our education system. We're overmanaged and underled. Look at businesses in general. Overmanaged and underled. And I really believe that. So, what is at Purdue? I, I led plastic molding operations. I spent 30 years running polyester reinforced thermal set plastic molding operations, anywhere from 200 people up to 3,600 people. So I tried to take that knowledge and took it into the classroom when I was at Purdue and had a great time in doing it. One of the people I really enjoy, his name is uh, Edward Deming. Does anybody know who W. Edward Deming is? Changed the world. After World War II, he had this idea on how to improve productivity. And he went to the U.S. Uh, rubber industries and the automotive work, and they said, get out of here, we don't need you, we're selling everything we make. So guess where he went? Japan. Japan. And uh, you know the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. So hopefully everybody's got one of the handouts right now, so we have through this, we're going to, as a professor, I'm going to have to give you a little quiz, so there's a quiz on here that you're going to work through, and um, hopefully everybody will enjoy as we have through it. So let's go ahead and get into this. The title of the presentation is called Leadership is an Attitude, and again, I, I taught about leadership, and uh, had a great time doing it. Edward Deming would always begin his classes with, with, with sessions that he did. He'd always say, why are we here? And so I tried to do this in all the classes I had to do. And all the, I still do a lot of consulting in the business world. And I'd be going, why are we here? And I think it's still true today. You want to guess, why are we here? Ted, tell me why we're here. I give up. No, read the, read, the, read the note. It says to learn, okay? We're here to learn. I'm trying to help you out here, okay? I'm not as bad as you think I am. Okay, we're here to learn. So maybe I, I'm not sure I can share a lot of wisdom with, with the amount of experience and maturity we have in here, but I'm going to try to share a little bit of my ideas with you and have some fun to process. So Al, let me pick on you. The second question, why are we here? Have fun. Oh, yes, have fun. There you go. Okay, we're going to try to some, maybe at your that's expense, that's but that's we're going to have some fun as we go through the process. And the third one, he says, to try to make a difference. I really want to try to make a difference in my students' lives, as well as perhaps I can share some ideas and some, maybe an awareness and impact our lives, too, that we can go out and make a difference within ourselves. Fair enough? Fair yeah. enough. That's what I've tried to do as we go through this. If I can make a difference in myself, and actually, I'm the only one I can lead. I try to create an environment where other people impact will lead themselves as we head through this. So trying to do that is a key pack. So that's really what we're trying to do. Note the happiest people don't have to have the best of everything. They make the best of everything that they have. So I love the quote as we move forward. So the question is, how many would consider yourselves leaders? And every hand should go up here. And by the way, I'm going to go through this really fast. I, I've got, I'm doing this presentation this afternoon for American Building Contractors. And it's a two and a half hour program. You're going to get it. You're going to get it in 35 minutes. Just part, just parts of it, okay? As we work through this. So, how many consider leaders? Leaders. Every hand should go up here. The question is asked: How did you get your leadership skills? If you know what leaders are, and I'd be willing to bet some of you in here have said, "Man, that person's a lousy leader," or "That person's a good leader," right? So, based on that, you know what leadership is. So, can you define it for me? Really thought about defining leadership, or really ship, what leadership really is. And the truth of the matter is, there is no one given definition for leadership. I know it when I see it. We know it when we see it, but if you know it, you should be able to define it then, right? Well, in the training that I do, I have two leadership definitions that I use. Uh, that in all the training I do, I keep coming back to these definitions. I'm going to share those with you today. They're not on your packet or anything. You don't need to know all of that stuff. But as we look at the leadership as the art and science to get the job done through the willing efforts of others. So it is an art and it is a science, and the key is we have to lead people to get the job done, all right? But how do we get it done? We get it done through creating an environment that will have willing workers put forth. In this, in this setting right now, why do you keep coming back? Because you're willing to put forth every part of this organization. So our job, our job as leaders, create an environment where people want to come back and participate in that. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. So every class, every, every meeting, 
every program we have, what can we do to create an environment? In fact, people put forth a willing effort. It's really what we're trying to do. The second definition is leadership is a catalyst. Oh, anybody tell me what a catalyst is? It, it does what now? Makes things happen. What's that called? It's called change. A catalyst is changing. So, so leadership is a change agent. Leadership is a catalyst that transforms potential into a new reality, yielding promise results. Everybody, your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, your students, everybody has potential they haven't realized yet, myself included. So as a leader, I want my job to be, in fact, help you realize a greater potential, make that become a reality, a new reality that allows you to go on further from that, right? We do it every day with our children, with our grandchildren. We're trying to keep training and making it so. Leadership is a catalyst. Leadership is a catalyst that transforms the potential they have into a new reality, creating positive results. It has to be positive. It's negative, maybe it's a tyrant. So we'll, in fact, look at that. So that's the two definitions. Not that you need to know those, it just kind of put it forth. So based upon that, the question is, how do you acquire your leadership skills? Are there such things as natural born leaders? Or are leaders really trained? And I ask that question, if in fact we believe leaders are only born, then we're wasting our time in a classroom. We can't train you. So in fact, it's a combination of both. They have to be born with those characteristics. I'm going to share some of those with you, not all of them today. Share with you some of the natural traits that leaders seem to have that non-leaders don't. Make sense? You ever met anybody who just doesn't get it? Yeah. We all have, haven't we, okay? And try as much as we want, they'll never be a leader. And it's okay. That's okay. There's another way they can get God created them. They're going to do some other job, a similar thing in, in the life. But in fact, some people just don't get it. But in fact, <laughs> leaders, in fact, are born with certain traits. I'm going to share you what some of those traits really are. And as we go through this, you can ask yourself, do I have these traits? And I'd be willing to bet all of you do. You're here, not by mistake, here because you're good, because you were, in fact, or are, in fact, leaders. That's right there. So just maybe kind of jot these down as you think about them as we go through this. So the first one, in fact, we look at says leaders have greater drive. We can say that translated into drive, enthusiasm, excitement, tenacity, perseverance. Call it whatever you want. <coughs> leaders have this drive. And, and we're looking for, by the way, if you're, in a, if you're in a business and you want to sell your business, what are your customers looking for? A company that has drive, energy, excitement, tenacity, perseverance. Make sense? So you as a leader, in fact, leading an organization, you want to have that. Every time I go into the classroom, by the way, I taught 730 classes. I'm a morning person. I like morning classes. Students don't wake up till 10.30. <laughs> so when I go in, I, I want to try to demonstrate my enthusiasm, excitement, tenacity, perseverance, drive. People really want that. The second is called a desire to lead. Leaders have this desire to lead. They, they, they want to be out front. Actually, if you go to a classroom, and where this research comes from, uh, I'll touch on this probably again. Anybody here have twins or know of twins? If you do, I'd be willing to bet one of the twins behaves probably on a proactive manner, and the other kind of behaves in a reactive manner, so to speak, right? One, in fact, will be, you go to, you go to any classroom, you ask the question, are, are leaders really born? Go to any schoolyard and watch these five, six, seven-year-old kids. There will always be one or two kids saying, hey, come and go with me. And that one child will always be in the leadership role, right? What are they showing? <coughs> Drive. And they don't know it, but they have the desire to be out front. They don't know what they're going to do. They make it up as they go along. But they'll always figure it out, right? The businesses are a lot of the same way. But you have to have that desire to lead. And if you make a mistake, so what? You learn from it, continue to go on. That's what leaders are about. So they have the drive, they have the desire to lead. Number three is called honesty and integrity. The leaders have a higher level of honesty and integrity. They believe them. In fact, I would submit to you the very foundation of leadership is based on what? It's your turn to respond. Based on what? Trust. The very foundation of leadership is based on trust. The question you need to ask yourself every day, what am I doing today to create an environment that my people will, in fact, trust me? The question we could ask, would you follow somebody you don't trust? The answer is no. So one thing that we do to destroy that trust, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the choir right now, okay? But in fact, one thing we do, and I advise all my students, to stop doing it. How can, how can you destroy trust the quickest way? But what can you do really to destroy trust? Do it? Lie. Well, lie to them is pretty obvious, yeah. Don't care. Gossip. Okay. Talk about people behind their back. Okay? You come and talk to somebody about somebody else behind their back to me. I'm wondering, what, what do you say about me when I'm not around? 
So don't stop this gossiping. In fact, I've, I've learned the lesson. If somebody tells me gossip, hey, why don't we go talk to Charlie or together, okay? No, 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 we can't. Why are you telling me this? Have you talked to Charlie definitely about this? So, so think about stopping the, this deterioration of the trust that we have in organizations and within people, which is really what organizations are living in. So desire to, to lead, honesty, integrity, drive. Number four is self-confidence. Leaders have a higher level of self-confidence. They know where they're going. They have a plan on how to get there. The little kid in the schoolyard, hey, come and go with me. What is he or she showing? Self-confidence. Drive. Desire. The kids are learning to trust them. That's why they're following. And the fourth thing is <coughs> cognitive ability or intelligence. Leaders proceed at a higher level. Level of intelligence. Everybody hear me okay? We're still okay? Yep. Yeah, okay. Good. Okay. I don't want to go to sleep on me here if we get through this. Um, being, being military, I would tell you, if you feel like you're sleeping, you can stand up and lean against the wall. You know, when you do that, remember, <laughs> you used to do that all the time. Okay. Um, so uh, the question that we, we, we have these things, I think we need to add one more, and I think the one that we need to add is that of an attitude. Okay. We, we need to add attitude, have an attitude for leadership. So the question you could ask, well, is this really a trait? Now, I will submit to you, this is not a peer-reviewed journal. But in fact, I found this when I was in London. I did a lot of study abroad programs. I <coughs> taught at uh, Cambridge and some colleges in London, Australia, parallel the world. It says, attitudes and weighty ethical issues such as abortion, death penalty, are partly determined by the genes, said researchers. It used to be thought that, at least for, that beliefs that whole, were wholly learned from parents, friends, teachers, and the culture environment of a person lives. But science has studied and changed their mind. They're studying 360 pairs of identical, non-identical twins. They said their views on 30 issues, and 26 of them appear to be under some inherited influence. So we can, in fact, say there is maybe we have some genetic fortitude there with, with respect to the attitudes that we embrace. Now, this is not a license to go out and yell at other people because you have a rotten attitude, okay? <laughs> but the question we could ask here, and I'm going to answer these questions for me rhetorically, so, well, what really is an attitude? And I could ask the question, who, who here has an attitude? And I, I, my voice dropped, got a little louder when I said that. I don't mean negative attitude. Okay, so hesitate putting our hands up. So can we describe what an attitude is? Well, attitudes are feelings and beliefs that logically determine how people want to respond in their environment. And could we say it's an attitude and belief that I have about other people that have a certain behavior I want to get back? I'm talking really fast. I'll slow down here for a little bit. We'll make sure I get through the information I have here, okay? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's my attitude and my feeling about the students in my classroom that's going to determine the behavior and action I get back, right? It's a cause and effect type relationship. It's the attitude I have toward you. Could I affect this? My attitude toward you determines your attitude toward me. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. And who starts that? The leader does. And you have to show that leadership skill. It's that simple. But we ramp and rave and yell and scream and everything else. And I, I was tested this morning. You know how, you know how to make God laugh? This is a dangerous joke, telling a bunch of ministers in here. You want to make God laugh, Gary? Tell him your plans. <laughs> he might have plans. Huh? Your tell him my plan. Yeah, tell him. My, and he may have. You may laugh at it. I don't think so, Rodney. This morning, my car wouldn't start. I just bought it like four months ago from a Cadillac dealership. Nothing against Cadillac. I have a chance to be a really, really negative attitude here when I had the car towed to the Cadillac dealership. Mike uh, Racer is a good friend of ours. Love him and everything else. So I had to think of how can I change my attitude to make this a positive? Make sense? Now, this could be a negative, but it caused me to miss a meeting this morning. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go there anyway, you know, so it's okay. So it's our right, so feeling the least we have to determine the actions and behaviors that we have. So we can say as leaders, it's our action, feelings, and moods to determine the action, feelings, and moods of other people. True statement? Think about that the next time you talk to somebody, you're at a meeting, something like It's your acts and feelings and moods toward them. It's to determine your acts and feelings and moods toward you. And we can control that. I spent 30 years in a union environment, negotiated contracts with the aluminum brick, aluminum brick clay, glass workers of America, and also the IBEW, the uh, uh, industrial, the, the electrical workers. Uh, went through five contracts, two strikes. I was tested with this all the time. I enjoyed it, had a great time doing that. But it's the action feelings moves that determines the action feelings moves others we have, would you agree? So the question is, how many have an attitude? And once again, I ask that question, hands going up against with, who controls your attitude? You do, yeah, right. <laughs> Sometimes that may not be the case. 
Uh, let me ask you a question. This is a little risky right here. I'm not really sure this is going to work the way I want it to, but we'll see. Does anybody ever drive on the interstate here? Lou, can I pick on you? Lou, I'll pick on you, but I see you in the back row back here. And Lou, do you ever drive on the interstate? Yeah. Tell me the truth now. When you're merged on the interstate, do you ever get cut off? Yeah. Yeah. How do you behave? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> A little sign language? <laughs> Maybe a little yelling at him as we go through that. In fact, if, you, if you're a male, if you're male, you merge on the interstate right behind him and tailgate him for a little bit, right? And then you get over the left-hand lane and just blow by him, right? And then you pull over in front and slow down. Kind of, kind of a male thing. It really controls your ass. So we're letting that one little incident, somebody cut me off as I merged on the interstate, really became, creates an unsafe behavior for us as we tailgate somebody. Possibility is certainly there, right? But, so let's see what, what really happens. So I'm going to show, try to show you a video here that illustrates this. Listen to what the one in the red says at the very end. Listen to what she says. I don't know what happened. By the way, it's not just a male thing. <laughs> just because that slamming of the door against the car created a situation where two cars were destroyed. Kind of been fun. But it really quest does that really happen in life with relationships? And the answer is I believe it probably does. So with that, we're going to explore this thing called attitudes, and I'm going to share with you who controls your attitude, we should. Don't let that little scratch on the car. A little worried about Al here, he's watching a video and he sees the, the car hit you and he says, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Don't park next to him with your new car. <laughs> <laughs> so, as parents, leaders, grandpas, grandparents, uh, who controls your attitude? In fact, we should. And sometimes we can let these little things happen. So I'm going to share with you some attitude adjustment techniques. Before we do that, though, you have a survey in front of you. This is the quiz. There are 10 questions on that. So if you have a pencil, just fill this out. I'm going to do it really, really fast. 
have a little fun with this, and then I'm going to share with you some attitude adjustment techniques and then four magic bullets for attitudes, and we'll call it a day. So it says, please rate your current attitude, read the statement and circle the number where you feel you belong. If you circle a 10, you're saying your attitude cannot be better necessary. If you circle a 1, you're saying it could be worse, okay? So I'm going to read them to you, but go ahead and circle as much as you can. I'm going to ask you to add up the score when I'm finished. Number one, if I were to guess my feeling is my boss or my current attitude as a? 1 being low, 10 being high. Number two, given the same chance my co-workers rate my attitude as a? Number three, realistically, I rate my current attitude as a? Number four, in dealing with others, I believe my effectiveness would rate a? Number five, my current creativity level is? One's low, ten's high. Six, if there were a meter that could gauge my sense of humor, I believe it would be close to a? Number seven, my recent dispositions of patience and sensitivity I showed to others deserves a rating of? Number eight, when it comes to not allowing little things to bother me, I deserve a? Number nine, based on the number of compliments I received lately, I deserve a? I usually get a few chuckles on that. Number ten, I rate my enthusiasm toward my job and life in the past few weeks as a? One being low, ten being high. Add up your score. How, how many scored 90 or higher? No way. I've got I can't add three hands in here. This is really great, okay? Well, if you scored 90 or higher, it says your attitude is in tune and no adjustment is necessary. You had your hand up back here. You scored over 90. Guess what the rest of this class needs? An attitude adjustment. You said it. I did, okay? Score between, I'm not going to ask for any more hands, but if you score between 70 and 90, minor adjustments may in fact help. And if you score yourself uh, between 50 and 70, major adjustments are necessary. And if you rated yourself, if you rated yourself below 50, a complete overhaul is going to be required. A little bit of a fun exercise, maybe it creates the energy, but the next time you, you, you go through the, the door to see your spouse, or you go to a business, or you go to the car dealership, Maybe you need to think, well, where's my attitude going to be as I work through this? I had to do it this morning to the car dealership. Uh, so I was tested. I said, maybe God is really testing me and preparing me for this presentation today. Make sure I'm ready to, to put it forward and have some fun in the process. Can we agree if our attitude as a leader or as a parent often determines success and failures of our teams and our people that are around us? Mm -hmm. Probably so. We can control that as leaders, okay? So I'm going to share with you some attitude adjustment techniques. I'm, not going to, I'm going to go through it fairly fast. I'm going to share a couple of stories with you as we have through this to try to illustrate the point. Number one says it's called the flip side technique. The more you can develop your sense of humor, the greater the positive energy you'll have, the better effect you can have. Now, I think probably everybody in here will remember this. Remember when President Reagan got shot? When President Reagan got shot, they was taking him to the hospital. There's a couple incidents where he used the flip side technique. One of those, remember when he was taken into the hospital, what, what was his comment? Well, that was the second comment. The first one, I forgot to duck. And then when, he, when the did come in, they put him on the, on the table getting ready for surgery. His comment looking at the surgeons was, I tr well, I trust all of you are Republicans. <laughs> okay, so in fact, you see, something as serious as the President of the United States being shot, using a flip side technique, an attitude adjustment, right, that in fact helped create an environment People, in fact, okay, I'm at ease, and we'll make things happen. So we can do that. Let me share another quick story. My wife and I were, were actually, I was teaching in Glasgow, Scotland, and that day we had purchased tickets to go on a, a bus trip over to St. Andrews to play some golf. But my back was really hurting me that day. But we had already purchased the tickets, so we went ahead and went over to Edinburgh and on to St. Andrews. And we got on the bus. And my back is still hurting, but we walked around the, the old course, got our picture taken there on a the little bridge across the 18th fairway did all of that sort of thing, walked through the, the city, looked through the ruins and everything, and stopped at the club around 2.30, 3 o'clock, and I told my wife, I says, you know, my back is, why don't we just go to the to the coach lot, bus lot, and let's let's get on the bus and sit for a while and wait, and then we'll head on back. Looked at the schedule, bus number 26, the one who brought us here that's going to take us back. So we went and sat on bus 26, we sit there about a half an hour, driver eventually gets on, about 10 or 12 people get on, closes the door, and he takes off. 
we're gone for like 30 minutes. He stops at this small town. He opens the door. He names the name of the town, and nobody gets off. Closes the door. It's fine. Closes the door. We continue on down another 25, 30 minutes. He stops the small town, opens the door, and names it. Nobody gets off. The people next to us said, where are you going? Evidently, don't, our faces aren't familiar on this route. And we said, well, we're going all the way back to Edinburgh to go to, go to Glasgow. And uh, they said, this bus doesn't go to Edinburgh or Glasgow. <laughs> no, bus 26. No, it's 68. It was 26 when I got on it, but he changed the number. <laughs> now, the flip side to this is what? I, I could really be ticked. They did say, you know, you got two people on here that shouldn't be on this route. They're not going where we're going to go, up to the North Sea. And uh, he did turn around and says, you guys have to be any place at a certain time. What's our choice? <laughs> not really, okay? Uh, he said, fine, sit back. We're going up to the North Sea. We're gonna, you're going to get to see it. Have a free trip up to the North Sea. Enjoy the view, and we'll, I'll give you a name of a pub to go to to have the great best fish and chips up there. And then we'll get back on the bus and come take you back to, to St. Andrews. And we did. What were our choices really seen here? Uh, let me give you a little quote. This is not in your package. You might want to write this down. You might not. I don't really matter one way that. Here's the quote. If you're angry, and I could have been angry. If you're angry, you're living in the past. Regardless of what you say, regardless of what you do, nothing's going to change that. If you're angry, you're living in the past. If you're fearful, you're living in the future. As leaders, we need to learn to live in the nowness, in the present. That's a Taoism saying. But we need to learn to live in what we really control, and that's the present. How many of you, in fact, in your career, you said, remember two weeks ago when you screwed that job up? Or you looked at your spouse or one of your kids, remember a year ago when you wrecked the car? What could you do to go there? They learned from it. Why bring it up? It solves nothing. It creates a negative attitude. Follow me? So learn to live in the nowness. And this flip side technique tells me that what can we find in the present that we can control? My car didn't work this morning. What's my choice? Use the, the other car. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> we did. We called AAA, Russ. Okay. And it worked. It worked great. So flip, flip, enjoy the flip side technique. Number two says play your winners. Our job is oftentimes as leaders, we think we, our job is to find people doing things wrong. It's the same process that created the good stuff that created the bad. If you don't like what's going on, change the process. And who's in charge of the process? We are. Change yourself. Change the process. Don't blame the people. They're trying to do it. For the most part, people who do as much, the best they can, they want to do the best they can to please you. But it's the process that's right. So find people doing things right. Number three says simplify. I'm not going to give you all of this, but tell you, it says, that in fact, unused, unappreciated possessions, get rid of them. If you got things hanging around you don't need in industry, we call this a 5S program. You have a 5S, a lean process improvement program. Go in and clean things out. My wife is extremely good at this. I'm not. I'm kind of like a hoarder. I want to keep things around. But she says, no, get rid of it. And she's right. So we've done that. Too many involvements. Sometimes we don't know how to say no. When in fact we always say yes, 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 want to please other people. No. And I could give you a whole another speech based upon how to say yes and how to say no and make that determination. But you know, find that find that balance that works for you with you in your life. Another part of three is three D. Friends who are negative need to be eliminated from your daily lives as a means to protect your attitude. Don't take this literally, but figuratively, if you got people that are pulling you down, let them know. Hey, why are you so negative all the time? And if you're going to continue to be that way, maybe we shouldn't associate as much together. <laughs> And that's happened to me twice. In both cases, it worked out well. And in fact, I talked to one person and uh, asked him why is it negative all the time. He said, Ron, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it came across that way. He was at Purdue. He was asked to step down as a department head, go back to teaching. So anything the administration did was terrible, sucked, and was not right. Uh, I said, I, I like the administration. I think things are going well. And he was complaining all the time. And finally, uh, I said, enough. He said, Ron, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it came across that He was pos always positive after that. And the other incident, it's not worth talking about, the guy finally moved away and went to Maine, and that's good for him. Okay. <laughs> Number four, give you a positive attitude to others. Be a positive on others. As, as more than not, you'll get what you want. So be, you must think, act, talk, conduct yourself as the person you want to become. Think about the little kid in the school year. When you want to be successful, what is he or she doing? Thinking, acting, talking, conducting themselves. And guess what happened? Other people follow. In the business world, you want to be a successful business? Think success, act success, talk success, behave that way. What happens? 
Good people to help you become successful. Think about it in life. You want to lose some weight? Think, act, talk, and conduct yourself that way. Guess what? You'll start behaving that way. We become a, a, a better educated, and you're going to put in the extra time, attend the extra classes, do the other things, but you're going to think, act, talk, and conduct yourself the way you want to. I want to become a, somewhat of a motivational speaker. I went to Zig Ziglar presentation one time. <laughs> Brian Tracy and, and, and uh, Brian Robbins. And man, that looks like a lot of fun. So if I want to do that, exactly what I'm doing here today, I have to begin to think, act, talk, and conduct myself, and behave that way. I gave hundreds of free speeches for, no, for HR associations, for rotaries, for uh, Lions clubs. They want to speak our area. They always want somebody to give 20 minutes free, you know. But I've developed my skills and built my class. And finally, some of points, so I say, how much you would charge coming to our company to do this? Well, oh, you're going to pay me for this. This is kind of neat. <laughs> you know? And since then, I get paid quite a while to go around and do, do presentations. Mm -hmm. Uh, travel the world to do that. I do work with Turner Broadcasting, CNN in August. We do a five-day leadership workshop with them down there. Um, we, I've been blessed, okay? But it didn't happen by accident. Begin to think, act, talk, and conduct yourself as the person you want to become. Good lessons in life. Number five, the better you look to yourself. If you're having a bad attitude, bad day, what can you do to, in fact, prove yourself? If it's a new haircut, new shirt, new shoes, whatever it is, by all means, do that. Look at my time. I've got five minutes here. I need to head through this really quick. Clarify your mission. The comment is here, if you don't have a mission or where you really go, uh, the comment is take charge of your own destiny, someone else will. You don't want to spend 30, 40 years from now and say, I, I, I didn't do half the things I wanted to. Whose fault is that? So find out what your missions are and define those and put them in place yourself. So I'm going to share with you the four magic bullets for leadership, I mean for, for attitudes, and we'll call it a day here. This is all research on the impact of positive attitudes, what it can do for you, the more creative, Release enthusiasm. So uh, this is a quote that's in your packet by Charles Swindoll. Everybody knows who Charles Swindoll is. Noted theologian, motivational speaker, author. You can follow along with me and read it with me there. I really want to spend a minute talking about this. The longer I, re the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude in life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, money, circumstances, fear, success, what other people think, say, or do. goes on and says, an attitude is more important than appearance, gift, or skill. This is what he says. An attitude, it will make or break a company, a church, or a home. Think about that. They don't teach us in the schools. We should. The attitude you have can make or break your home, your company, your church. That's powerful. Who controls that? You should. The remarkable thing is we have the choice every day regarding the attitude we'll embrace in the day. We're going to change inedible. He says there's going to be some things happening to us. We can't change that. We can't change the past. We cannot change the fact that some people are going to act in a certain way. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have in that is our attitude. He says, I am convinced that life is 10% happens to me and 90% how I react to it. So it is with you. We should be, in fact, in charge of our attitudes. Yeah. William James said it this way. He says, the greatest discovery in a generation that a person can change your life by changing their attitude. You don't like where you're at? Change the attitude. Uh, Scott Hamilton. Uh, 1984 gold medalist, had testicle cancer. Fought cancer in his face. By the way, he's in a battle now with brain cancer, okay? But his comment was, and it says, the only true disability in life is a bad attitude. And he has a positive attitude regardless of where he's at in life. Great example of that. So the four magic bullets for attitudes. Number one, it's your attitude of beginning difficult tasks more than anything else to determine a successful outcome. So if you go into it with the attitude, I can do it, you're probably right. If you go into the attitude, I can't do it, it's not worth my time. You're probably right. So it's the attitude you take into that. And I ran my companies with that disposition. You know, first company I took over, I, I was 32 years old. The next person on the leadership staff that was that was reporting to me was 55. So I, I had to in fact create an environment that in fact they would trust me. But in fact I had to go in with the attitude that I could be successful at this, and we were very successful. I got some stories I could tell you on that. That Mary Jo and I still participate in that activity and left that business 32 years ago. We still have that relationship with them today. Second, it's your attitude toward this, it's your attitude toward you. We've already talked about this. It is a cause and effect type relationship. We could say it's our attitude toward life that determines life's attitude toward you. And by the way, you have, I guess you don't have these magic bullets on here. I can, I'll be glad to send this to anybody if you want them. Uh, number three, it's worth repeating for you to achieve the kind of life you want to think, act, talk. Conduct yourself as a person you want to become. Now, most of us are in retirement. 
The question is, what do you really want to do in retirement? This past summer was our 50th wedding anniversary, you all know that. We had the good fortune of taking our family on Alaska cruise. Been planning for some time to do that, all 14 of us. They had never been on a cruise before. It was exciting, great time. We, we can, we're spending our inheritance, by the way. <laughs> and it's going great, okay. Um, but we had to think, act, talk, and conduct as, as what we want to do. We put money ahead of, ahead, away ahead of time to be able to do all that stuff. Make sense? And number four, it says, remember, the higher you go up in organization value, the better the attitude you'll find. Here's a key point. It wasn't success that created the attitude, but it's an attitude that leads success. Of any organization value, who's going to get promoted? The one with the positive attitude or one with the negative attitude? It's positive. It's given. So if you want to maintain that type of relationship with business, why not be positive? It's really up to you to be able to do that. Your living is determined not so much by the life it's bringing, but by the attitude you have in life. So it is so much what happens to you by the way your mind looks at things that happen as a Lou Dunnington. So with that said, we're not going to we're going to call this an end. Okay, we're, it's uh, it's one o'clock. It's right on the money. So. I could give you a lot more, but this is, uh, it's been fun yeah. so far. Hopefully, so the question is, number one, did we learn anything? Yes. Did we have some fun? Yes. And can we go out and make a difference with ourselves? Yes. yes. I've been successful. <laughs>